Hi, this is video 6 of my Kiwi Crash course. Last time we added to our program some simple interaction between Python and the Kiwi language. Specifically, we made it so that changing the text input text here not only updates the text of our label, but also changes its color. In fact, it's something random every time we update the text at all. Going back to the code, we accomplished this by a very generally useful method. We gave the widgets we cared about IDs in Kiwi language, so in this case the label has the ID my label. We called the uh, we called a method on the Python side using this on text event. And as I mentioned, every Kiwi property that we're defining here has an associated event like that. So we could have on height do something to call some function, do some code whenever the height changes. Uh, that's going to be to some extent the topic of this video. So we do that. We call something on the Python side to change label color method. And then going to the Python side, we create a random color, we get a reference to our label by using its ID, and we set its color, and that propagates the graphics to give it a random color every time the text is changed. So, in this video, I'm going to start, first of all start to show how that starts to get a little bit unwieldy as we start to make some more changes to our program. Nothing major, we can certainly do everything this way if you want to, but let's just see how it goes. So let's just quickly add a few more widgets, a box layout with orientation horizontal. It's actually the default, so we don't need to set it, but let's be clear. Let's set its height manually. 150 pixels, I guess. Add a label, child, let's make it text, track the text input again. Uh, but let's only say the first three characters reversed or something size 100, something similar for this one, text, let's see the last three characters, same font size, so now we have two labels in a box layout, which will appear at the bottom of the screen, you notice I'm using some Python code here, so as before, everything on the right hand side of a colon in Kiwi language is pure Python, so we can simply make total use of the normal Python string operations to cut bits out of the text input string, and also as before, both of these text uh, entries are going to track the text of our text input because it's been referenced directly from them. And Kiwi language can detect that and make a binding automatically for us. Let's just check what that's going to look like. So there we are. Now we have two other labels at the bottom. Uh, we can edit all three of them by changing this to anything. Uh, one of them tracks the front, one of them tracks the back. Whatever. So there we are, just a simple change to our program. My question now is, how can I update all three of the labels to have the same random color whenever I type anything? At the moment, only this uh, main one that we've already handled has done so. So let's go back to the code. And the obvious answer is very simple. We already know, we just do exactly what we had before. Each label gets an ID, label one, label two. And on the Python side, we can just do the same again. Label one equals self to IDs, label one. Label 2 is self.ids2. Uh, actually, I should mention here, there is another syntax. I mentioned I put a little text description in the last video, but we can just do dot label 1 and dot label 2. It means exactly the same thing, uh, just a different syntax that can be more useful, especially if you have nested uh, IDs. It's not important here. I just do label 1 dot color is that color and label 2 dot color. So totally exactly the same as last time. We've set both of the new label colors and we can check that that does work. Change the text. Yep, there we are. All three labels change. Same random color whenever we type anything. Seems fine. My problem with this is it sort of starts to get a little bit unwieldy once we start to add more things. It's okay here, three, that's not so many things. We can reference them all by ID. But what if we have more labels, or even other widgets wanting to depend on the color in some way, maybe in different widget trees, not in the scatter text widget? How we do that? And that's when it starts to become more complex, even though you can always work through it if you want to. What would be much neater is if we could do what Kiwi is clearly doing behind the scenes. For instance, our current labels reference the text of the text input, but there's no ID transfer going on here, uh, except in the sense that we reference the text input via one. Kiva language is creating the bindings for us, the text input itself doesn't know about the labels, as opposed to what we have here, where the scattered text reader knows exactly what labels there are because it has to in order to pass the color through to them. 
What we'd like to do is instead get rid of all this manual setting and simply do something like self.textColor equals the new color that we made. And in Kiwi language, it would be nice if we could simply say color root.textColor. So again, root is a keyword referring to the top level widget. So that's a scatter text widget, so that's fine. And we'd like to just say for all three of the labels, their color should be that, just as we did for the text with the text input text. OK, that won't work. There are two problems immediately. The first you might have noticed is that it'll actually just crash. The problem is, in the Python side, text color is only first uh, set as an attribute when this method is run. So that's going to mean the labels crash the program when they try and reference that text color before it even exists. We could fix that if we wanted to, but we'd still have the problem that this still wouldn't work because Kiwi language has no way to know when the text color changes. That's just a, a property of Python. Kiwi itself is doing something behind the scenes to mean, that to mean that the text can automatically be updated when the text input text changes. And we have to duplicate that if we want to get the behavior we want and automatically update all three colors by just setting the text color once. That's fine too. The answer to how we do this is we have to make text color be a Kiwi property. To do this, we import it. I'll just show you exactly how to do it. Uh, and then it'll become more clear, I think, how to do it more in general for your own apps. So from Kiwi properties, we import the kind of property we want. There are several different kinds. There's a numeric property for holding numbers, integers and floats and so on. There's a list property for holding lists. There's a, a general object property for holding general Python objects and classes. Or there's even things like a bounded numeric property that does error checking and raises an exception if, say, the number passed to it is outside a certain range, so you can catch errors at this level in your program. For now, we'll just use a simple one, a list property, a list property. And the way we define this is at top level on an app, we simply say, at a top level in the scatter text widget, we declare text color is a list property, and we can give it a default value. Let's make it red. This is RGBA again, as normal. So there we are. That's it. We've defined a Kiwi property, a list property, four elements for a default value. And now when we set this property, it's truly a Kiwi property. That means we've now accessed all of the Kiwi normal property system. So all the things that I've sort of mentioned in passing, it's not clear how they're really going on. We can do, for instance, a text as an on text, but now we could have on text color do things. And that would mean we could call any arbitrary function, any code when our text color changes. Because it's a Kiwi property, and because Kiwi will automatically call through the normal Kiwi language procedures, and call all those automatical events as and when the, the text color changes. There are also other things, for instance, on the Python side, you can do the same thing. We could have on text color and do whatever. And exactly the same way as if this method exists, Python will call it whenever the text color changes. So that can be a very useful way of defining behavior for your app in response to other things changing. For now, we've actually done everything we wanted to. If we check the, py the, the Python side, we've defined the text color, we've set it. On the Kiwi side, we set all three labels to track that text color. So let's just run the program. As expected, now red is a default color because that's what I set the Kiwi property to. And now every time I change it, all three things change automatically to the same color randomly. But now we aren't passing IDs around, we're just setting our single text color and only referencing that the same effect in the end, but it can be a much easier way to achieve large-scale interactions in your application. I'm going to stop there. Ultimately, the only change I've made this time is very simple, creating this list property, but now we have a whole world of behavior open to us, ways that we can interact, have different things that we've invented in our app, interact with one another, not just limited to what Kiwi provides for us, things like the text property and so on, that already existed. I do encourage you to experiment with uh, your own applications if you're following along. Like I said, there are other properties, not just the list property. You can try all different sorts of ones. Uh, they all dispatch events when they change, but the advantage here is things like if we change the single element of this list, it could still dispatch that change and cause the update. Whereas you might find if you just use an object property, that wouldn't know that the list had changed internally. It would only know that you'd changed what list you'd passed to it. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, I do urge you to just try it out it quickly becomes clear what you can and can't do. Over the next few videos, I'll inevitably cover more of what properties can do because they're so integral to how a Kiwi program works. 
I think immediately in the next one, I'll probably cover Kiwi graphics instructions, where we'll start to see how we can draw things directly to the screen. Circles, ellipses, colours, lines, even mapping images to strange shapes. And that also has property syntax and the neat Kiwi language syntax, so we can draw things in Kiwi language and again retain all this neat automatic binding that we already have. But as usual, that's for next time. For now, thank you for watching.